What's up everybody, Cashflow Chris. Today I'm gonna to run through two different scenarios so I can help show you how to create a legacy. Everybody, Cashflow Chris here taking on. Yo, what's up everybody, Cashflow Chris here at our. What's up everybody, Cashflow Chris with the Edge Real Estate here. We're gonna be talking about building a legacy today. What does that mean? That means cash flow. What I want for you to be able to build a legacy is you have to have more passive income coming in than you have expenses going out. When that's the case, your wealth will build every single month, every single year. Most people, when they are looking towards retirement, they kind of are just going to save as much money as they can and then they're going to spend as little as they can. Basically, it's a race to how much money can I save to where I don't have to die early very bad way to uh, look at your financial planning. So today I'm going to run through two different scenarios. We're going to start with a small, small amount of money, $15,000, something that's attainable to most uh, Americans. And we're going to invest that two separate ways. On this side, we're going to invest it in the stock market. And over here on this other side, we're going to invest that same $15,000 in real estate. Let's get started. So, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the stock market because it's easy to figure these things out. There's two vastly different ways that uh, real estate and the stock market uh, have, have pros and cons. One of the biggest pros for real estate that the stock market doesn't have is leverage. Being able to leverage your money makes all the difference. The inability to leverage on the stock market side of things is what's really going to limit your uh, capabilities to grow wealth. Okay. So let's get started. First of all, we're going to start over here on the left hand side with the stock market side. I've already done the math, so I'm just going to run it through you guys. Pull out your calculator because I want to make sure you, uh, my numbers are right and I want to make sure that you see how this works. Okay, so let's get started over here with $15,000. on the stock market, okay? So we are gonna make some assumptions. You have to make assumptions when you are trying to project what's gonna happen in the future. So I wanna be not so conservative with the stock market side of things. Let's, uh, let's assume that everything is gonna go great for the next 15 years. And um, let's assume that the stock market will continue to receive the great gains that it's having and let's assume that it's going to average the eight to nine percent uh, rate that has happened over the last hundred years. Typically, the stock market is not a bad place to have your money. It does go up over time. Now, we've had an 11 year run up. It's 2020 right now. Um, is there a chance that we're going to have a down stock market in the next few years? Yeah, there is. Uh, we'll probably have quite a few years. A lot of people are projecting a recession or a depression once we finally come out of this amazing run that we've had. So we're not even going to worry about that. We're going to assume that it's just going like that slow and steady. So let's go here to our compound interest calculator. Okay. So I'm going to make a few assumptions here. We're going to assume that you're, you have an initial deposit of 15,000, zero contributions. You're just putting the 15,000 in one time over 15 years. And we're going to give you an estimated return of 8% compounded yearly. Okay. So you're never pulling the cash out. Uh, anything that goes in stays in and then each year it's going to compound. So you can see over here, not bad. $15,000 turned into $47,583. Okay. Let's go over to our whiteboard. So in 15 years, it's worth 47, $583. Okay. That's what's happened to your stock account. Now remember you can't leverage. So you have 15,000 and that's all you have to work with. Um, on the real estate side, we'll show you, you can definitely leverage and you can buy bigger assets with the same amount of money. But on this side, you're not able to. So you are growing from 15,000 to 47,000 in 15 years. Okay. So, I want you to ask your financial advisor of this. If I now have 47,000 and I'm ready to retire, I'm not ready to be aggressive with my money anymore. I want this 47,000 to earn me income. 
and I don't want it to go down. It has to be in a safe investment. So if you talk to your financial advisor, they're probably going to throw you in some sort of either a CD or some sort of, um, some sort of product that is a guarantee not to lose your money. Okay. Now, typically those provide very low returns. Your typical CD these days is going to be one to 2% interest. Uh, your, um, your other products, if you are lucky, you're going to be able to get 5%. But again, we want to look on the bright side of things for the stock market. So let's assume you're going to be able to make 5% guaranteed return on these without the ability of losing any of your principal. We're going to make that assumption, even though it's, it's, it's a difficult task. So at 5%, uh, we are, you are going to be making $2,380 a year. And that's at 5% ROI. Okay. Let's get even more aggressive. Let's say that your guy can make you 8% guaranteed without the chance of losing your, your principal. In that case, you're going to be making $3,806 a year. Okay. So that's where we're at. That side is done. It, as you can see, has compounded. It has gone up, 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 up. We're not assuming you're going to have any down years. We're also not assuming you're going to have any crazy 15 to 20% years. Nice, slow, and steady. This is what your financial advisor tells you will happen if you hold for the long term, right? Okay. So not bad. We're not, we're not unhappy with this, right? Not a bad way to, uh, to invest until you find out the power of leverage with real estate. Now let's look at what real estate looks like. It's a lot more complex. Um, you can be as involved or not involved as you want. Uh, most of our investors are not involved at all. They make the initial investment and then they, it's just a hold and wait period. So let's go over this, put it in blue. So 15,000 in real estate means you can leverage. Okay. So that is going to get us a $60,000 property. And let me show you how. So this is a very typical, I'm going to be talking about a very typical type of product that we work with. We are currently heavily invested in the Cleveland, Ohio market for several different reasons. And this is a typical single family that we sell to our clients. This is the purchase price. And what you're going to need as an investor is you're going to need 20% down payment. So let's take away 12,000 and you have a balance of 48,000. Okay. So again, we started with 15,000. We use 12. Okay. And then it's going to cost about $1,500 for closing costs. And then we always want to have reserves. So we're going to have you keep an extra $1,500 in for reserves. Okay. So now you are up to um, $15,000, all right? There's your $15,000 right there. So you are fully invested. You have $1,500 in the bank still, but that's because you need that money in the bank just in case anything happens. Now let's back up a little bit for 60,000. We're not selling you a fixer upper for 60,000. We're selling you a house that has already been remodeled. It's already been rented and it's currently cash flowing. Okay. So what is that going to look like? Okay, let's move this down a little bit. Okay. So, uh, $48,000 mortgage. Now, what does that look like? Let's go to our mortgage calculator. So 48,000 at the current 4.5% interest rate. Many of our investors are getting at a, a rate lower than this, but again, we want to be, con we want to be conservative on the real estate investing side. I know I'm biased because I know real estate is better. So we're going to be uh, aggressive on the, in, on the stock market side, and we're going to be conservative on the uh, real estate investing side. So 4.5% interest. And here's the key guys. Here is the key. We're throwing these on a 15 year mortgage and we're going to talk about why. 
So what is our payment? Our payment is $367 on that. So now we've put our down payment. We have a loan, $48,000, and we know that loan in 180 payments, 15 years, is gonna be zero. And that's the key to retirement. So here we go. Go back to our whiteboard. Okay, so what does this type of investment look like? So this $60,000 house typically is gonna rent for around $900 but I wanna be conservative. So we're gonna estimate that it is only going to um, rent for $800. So rent, $800, okay? So there are several expenses that are involved in real estate investing. We all know this. Uh, some of the costs are gonna be property management, um, repairs, um, vacancy, we can't always assume that our tenants are gonna stay there the whole time, so we have to, to do vacancy. Typically, you can account for about 30% in expenses because your other expenses are gonna be your tax and insurance, right? So, not including your mortgage, typically it's gonna be around 30% expense ratio. We wanna be conservative. We're gonna count a 40% expense ratio, meaning 40% of your monthly rent is gonna go either towards uh, your actual expenses or they're going to go towards reserves to make sure you have that money in the bank for those maintenance issues that may pop up. Okay, so 40% 40 40 of expenses is $320. So we have $480 left over. So $480 is what's left over each month. That's after all of our expenses, 40% expenses, okay? So now let's plug in our, our, our mortgage because these do not include your mortgage. You're gonna say minus, what did we say it was? $367. Okay. And that's gonna give you a cash flow of <laughs> $113 a month, one, one, three, okay? This guys, this $113, this is why real estate's not sexy. Who cares about $113? It's not a big deal, right? Wrong, it is a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Because you are cash flowing on a 15 year mortgage. Again, this is the key. I don't want you to wait 30 years to, to uh, retire. Let's actually look at what is that gonna look like? So instead of a 15 year, what does a 30 year look like? 243. So that's an extra 120, $130 per month. That's gonna increase your cash flow, right? But I don't want you to increase your cash flow. I want you to pay these assets down because you don't need an extra $120. You have a great job, you're saving money, and if you bring that money in, you're just gonna spend it anyways on frivolous things more likely than not. So this 113, we're not even gonna count it, right? But what happens if we did count it, okay? So, $113 a month times 12 months is 1,356. Let me erase this line. Okay, so we are making, we're not gonna be spending this money though. I'm actually gonna teach you to kick that back towards the payment, but that's not for today's video. So your 113 is a measly 1356 a year, right? Not great, but is it? That divided by your $15,000 invested is a nine, 9.04% ROI. So, we are accounting for all of our expenses. You know, we've leveraged, we're counting for all of our expenses, we're covering our mortgage, everything is paid, and we're still making a 9% return. Right off the bat, you're already beating this 8% that they're telling you is so good, okay? Let's not worry about that though, okay? Because that's not, that's not an issue. So 9.04%. There's other factors that you may not know about. So one of the big things is we're on a 15 year mortgage, guys. So that means every single month, every single year, 
your mortgage is getting paid down. In fact, the very first year, your mortgage is going to be paid down $2,293. $2,293 plus your $1,356 cash flow equals uh, $3,649. Which is, when you do the math, $3,649 divided by $15,000 invested is 24.3% ROI. Now, you're making, in reality, triple what the stock market is going to make. But, I digress. Again, we're not pulling this out, and this is just equity anyways. There's nothing you can do with that unless you sell. And we're never going to sell these properties because this is how you're going to build generational wealth. This is how you're going to build a legacy. Okay. All right. Hopefully everybody's caught up. We're on a 15 year mortgage. We're cash flowing a measly little $113 a month money. We're never going to spend. It just keeps going back in the account. We're not worried about it. And uh, each year, the very first year it's paid off 2293 and it'll be paid off more every single year. So where are we at? We know at the end of 15 years, we're going to have a property that with a zero mortgage. That's the goal. In 15 years, your mortgage drops off, your 367 drops off, and that becomes pure cash flow. Okay? So that's what our numbers look like right now. Let's fast forward. So now 15 years has gone by. Okay, you're 15 years older. You're probably looking forward to retirement. I don't want you to retire at 60, 65. I want you to retire at 50. I want you to retire at 45. The sooner you get started with this plan, the 15 year clock starts. Okay. So, so let's get going. So now we're 15 years older. We got a little bit of gray in the beard, but what does our investment look like now? Real estate. Again, we have to make assumptions. Typically real estate will double in value. Real estate, Prices and rents will typically double every 15 years, but we want to be conservative. We're not going to assume that this property is going to double. We're going to assume that it's going to go up in 50, by 50%. Very conservative numbers. Okay. So now our property is worth 90,000. But more importantly, our income, our rent has jumped from 800, 50% more is $1,200. Okay. Now our rent increases, but our expenses are also going to increase. So we're going to, again, we're going to pull 40% expenses out of it, which uh, leaves us with 720. So minus 40% equals uh, $720. So now our expenses are paid. We have 720 and we have no mortgage. Your mortgage is paid off at zero. So what do you have? You have $720 per month cash flow. What is that on a year times 12? You now have $8,640. And you had your original $15,000 investment, right? So now you're making a whopping 57% ROI. Beautiful, right? You have income coming in. You, your, uh, your asset has gone up to 90,000. It's free and clear. And it's kicking off $8,640 per year. This is after all your expenses. This is after vacancy, after repairs, after all these expenses, you are still positive $8,640. Okay. Maybe that still doesn't impress you, even though it should. Let's have a look. What does this mean? Uh, so if we go back and we, and, and we looked at, how much money is our stock market investment going to make? We said it's going to make uh, 
and it went up to $47,583. I want to show you guys something though. So you make on your property $8,640 per year. So how much would you need to have in the bank to be able to make $8,640? It's real simple math. 8640 and then you divide it by the interest rate that you would uh, hope to achieve. So if we're in the stock market, 0.05%, that's what we, we assume would be a safe conservative where you're not gonna lose your money. So in order to receive the kind of cash flow that this property is giving you, you need to have $172,000 in the bank. Do you have that with the stock market? No. It's only grown even with uh, very non-conservative numbers, even with aggressive numbers, it's only gone up to $47,000. That's why you're only making uh, $2,300 a year. That makes it so much more difficult. So you've invested this 15,000, it's gone up to 47, but again, your, your, account, your uh, financial planner, they don't know how to turn these into cash flow where it's safe, unless they turn it into like a CD or something that's guaranteed. Ask your financial advisor, call them right now. Hey, if I, once I'm done and I'm ready to pull out of the stock market and I want something safe, it's not gonna lose value, it's gonna give, give me guaranteed returns, what kind of returns can I expect? What kind of product are you gonna put me in? Call them, ask them that. I guarantee you that it's not gonna be more than five or 6% on the, on the good side. Really, it's probably gonna be more like a two or 3%, okay? So, 172,000 versus 47,000. Are you ready to save that kind of money? Okay, doubtful, doubtful. Okay, so that's where we are. So as you can see, 8,000, oh, well, I can't live off 8,000. Well, that's okay, because we're only taking 15,000 to turn it into $8,000 a month or a year. Think about that. You're gonna invest $15,000 now and in 15 years, you're going to be making over $8,000 a month, or I'm sorry, a year. That's not bad, okay? So let's 10x this. So let's say over the next five years, you find a way to build, to buy 10 of these, okay? So if you bought 10, 15,000 times 10 equals now you're investing $150,000. Not crazy, not crazy, right? So if you do it my way, you're gonna have, oops, I got my numbers here, I don't need to do that. So you're gonna have 8,640 times 10, and that's your monthly, I'm sorry, that's your yearly. So now you have $150,000 has created $86,400 a year. Who can live off $86,400 a year off $150,000 invested, right? Not bad. Because look what happens if you do this over here. Your $15,000 turns into $150,000, but you're only going to be making $23,000. Would you rather live off $86,000? Or would you rather live off 23,000? You know, are you going on vacations at 86,000 or 20,000, right? You're not doing anything at 20,000. You're poor. You're, especially in 15 years, you're extremely poor. And now I know this is off $150,000 invested, but extrapolate it out. How much money do you have? How much do you need to save? So let's talk about that. Let's just say, so in 15 years with inflation and as all costs increase, I am going to imagine that 100,000 a year would be approximately 60,000 now. 60,000 is a, a fairly comfortable lifestyle. You know, you're not, you're not a jet setter, you're not going anywhere, but your bills are paid, you're comfortable, you have excess money. So I'm going to assume in 15 years, you're going to want a minimum $100,000 income right? So if we do 100,000 divided by 12 months, that equals you're going to need $8,333 a month. Oops. Let's not even do that. Let's do this. 100,000. So if you are in the stock market, 
how much money do you need in your bank account to keep your money, not spend it again? Don't give me that crap because we're talking about building a legacy. The way you build a legacy is you don't spend your money. It means your money makes more money than you spend, right? That's how you build a legacy. So don't give me this, oh, I don't need that much money because eventually, because do you want to live to where, hey, I have X amount in the bank, I spend X amount per year, therefore I can live 15 more years? <laughs> do you want to put yourself on a clock or do you want to live for as long as you want to live? That's what, that's what the difference is here. A lot of people actually look about that. Oh shit, I only have $200,000 in the bank. I spend this much. My 200,000 only makes me this much. That means every single month I'm losing, losing, losing. Every single month I'm making less and less and less. That's what your financial advisor is teaching you and that is not the way to build wealth. This is how you build wealth. So if you want $100,000 and your uh, financial advisor can get you a 5% guaranteed return, this is how much money you need in the bank. You do divided by 0 0.05 equals $2 million. Are you going to save $2 million? If you're invested over here in the stock market, are you going to save and earn $2 million? Doubtful. Most people will not be able to do that. You're only saving 150 in this scenario. Okay. So that's why I teach real estate. You have to be able to leverage. You cannot leverage in the typical stock market. The way to leverage is to do more aggressive and very dangerous types of plays. Leverage in real estate is safe. You're covered. You have an asset that cash flows. You have an asset that brings in money every single month. So you are covered. So to wrap this video up, I hope this all makes sense to you. I know there's a lot of math involved. But really all you need to know is, can I leverage and how much money is my money going to make and in how many years is it going to take to do that? We know if you borrow this 48,000 on a 15 year mortgage, 180 payments, it's zero. It is, it's math. <laughs> That's how it works. Okay. So I want you to do this 10 times. I want you to do this 20 times. What if you took uh, $300,000 eventually over the next five, 10 years, you saved up, you grew your money, $300,000. Um, I mean, that's going to be some serious cash flow. That's, that's 20. So that's $8,600 times 10 would be 80 times 20. That's $160,000 and that's fully attainable. It is worry about buying one, two or three a year for the next five years. And in 20 years, you are going to be financially free. Not only are you going to be financially free, you're going to be a millionaire and maybe you don't need all that money. Well, you just need to buy even less. I can live off 60,000, right? Or 80, 86,000. If you think you can live off 86,000, terrific. You only need to buy 10 of them. Okay. So that's where we're at. I hope this was an, a great video for you. I hope it opened your eyes to the power of real estate. Now, as I finish, I want you to go to your financial advisor and I want you to ask them a few questions. First of all, how's my retirement going? Ask them that. Um, in February, 2010, the stock market was at 10,268 on February 16th, 2010. Today's February 10th. Today, the stock market is a little bit under 29,000. So the stock market has just about tripled in the last 10 years. Don't get me wrong. The stock market's fire. The stock market is doing amazing. A lot of your retirement funds are doing great, but are they matching the market? Is your financial advisor putting you in the right investments or are they being too conservative in this amazing market? Uh, so go and ask, say, hey, what was it worth in 2010? Is it worth triple now? If it's not, you have some serious issues. Secondly, um, if it hasn't, why not? But uh, the second question I want to you to ask your financial advisor, what fees are involved, right? Because they don't talk about that. They don't want to do that. Uh, your mutual fund manager, a lot of those guys, they're going to be taking a half a point, a full point, up to three points every single year when you pay, uh, somebody for buying a real estate investment, you pay them at closing. It, you pay them one time. Of course, there's cost of doing business, but we already factored for all those. 
So as a realtor, if I sell you a property, I'm not gonna charge you 3% every single year, every single year, every single year, but that's what your financial advisor is gonna do. They charge you every single year. So that's the second question I want you to ask them. What fees do you charge to manage my money? The third question, uh, what do they re recommend for retirement that won't lose value? That's the key. We know cash flowing real estate, we've owned them for 15, 20 years. We know that they are a great investment. We know that they're gonna be a consistent and something that you can really count on. So Mr. Financial Advisor, uh, once I amass all this cash, what am I gonna roll it into? You know, what am I gonna do to make sure that I get this income that's guaranteed and it's not gonna lose its value? Similar to a CD. Ask them what kind of product they have. Okay, and then, and then see what they answer. And lastly, where will the stock market be in 15 years? Mr. Uh, Mr. Advisor, I wanna retire in 15 years. You're telling me to buy and hold for the long term, which we know it goes like this, right? It goes up and down. So in 15 years, Mr. Advisor, where are we gonna be? Are we gonna be up? Are we gonna be down? What's it gonna be worth? They can't tell you because they don't know. Now you ask your real estate advisor, Mr. Real Estate Advisor, I'm gonna borrow $48,000. In 15 years, what's my balance gonna be? It's gonna be zero. Now you can also ask me, what's my property gonna be worth? And you know what? I can't answer that because I don't have a crystal ball. But here's the key. It doesn't matter. You're never gonna sell this property because this property equals cash flow. That is the key, it equals cash flow. Okay, so those are the four questions. How's my retirement grown in the last 10 years? Has it tripled? If it hasn't, get a new financial advisor. Uh, two, what fees are they charging you every single month, every single year? On that, how can I reduce that? Is, can you, will you charge me less? What can I do to reduce those fees? Uh, third, what do you recommend for retirement that won't lose value, be it CD, mutual fund? And number four, where will the stock market be in 15 years? They don't know because they don't have a crystal ball either. They're going to tell you it's going to average 8%. They're going to tell you it's going to be up here. But again, guys, 11 years we've been on this run. If you think it's going to keep going forever, you're crazy. Um, I have a story that I just wanna tell you guys, and I want you to really take this to heart. So growing up, we had a great family in our neighborhood. Uh, the two people, they worked great jobs at a local, local company. We won't get too into the details because I don't wanna divulge any information, but they worked at, let's just call it Intel. They didn't work at Intel, but it was a place very similar to Intel. They both worked there, they made great salaries. They saved up a million dollars for retirement. I'm like, how hard do you have to work to save a million dollars? They had this ready to go, ready to retire. And then 1999 hit, right? Financial collapse, what happened? Their million dollars went down to $500,000. Shit, I guess we can't retire. So they keep working, keep working, he retires, she keeps working, boom, 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 boom. A million dollars, we have a million dollars again. Boom, 2008 hits, lose half again. You have to be cognizant. You have to pay attention to what's out there, guys. Buy and hold is for suckers. Your financial advisor wants you to leave that money in because he gets paid every single year. That's why he wants you to hold for the long term. That's why they give you that BS advice. If you were smart and you paid attention, you're, you would have been out of the market. Maybe not in 07, maybe you would have gotten out. Maybe in 08 you wouldn't have. But 09, as it's still tanking, 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 get out. Put your money on the sidelines, let alone in a better investment. If you would have just put your money on the sideline, as it's tanking, you get out here, you watch it tank, you watch it bottom, and then you get back in here, you're, lo you're missing that bottom. But the Dave Ramseys of the world, they don't believe in that. They tell you, they think you're an idiot. They want you to hold for the long term, hold for the long term. That's a bad plan. The stock market is a roller coaster ride and you don't know where it's gonna be when you're ready to get off. This is Cashflow Chris. I hope this was very helpful for you. If you wanna set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation, I can set you up on one of these plans to make you wealthy. Again, we're talking about building a legacy. I want you to build generational wealth and real estate's how it's done.
cash flow crisp and I'm out. Yeah.